this video is from a concerned Hindu to his Naga friends, brothers and sisters. We know that since around 1947 itself, there has been Naga insurgency, Naga terrorism, Naga militancy in Nagaland because the Christian Nagas want to carve out a separate Nagalim or greater Nagaland out of Northeast India. Now these Nagas say that they were never part of India. They say that they are not Hindus, they are Christians, hence they want a separate country and they have a natural right for a separate nation. To all my such Naga friends who support Nationalist Socialist Council of Nagalim, Isaac Muiba, I would like to ask you that before the Christians came to Nagalim in 18th century, 1800, what was the religion of your Naga ancestors? What was the original religion, belief of your Naga forefathers? Your Naga forefathers were as pagans and as animists as Hindus are and Hindus were. Your ancient Naga forefathers used to worship the sun, the moon, the rivers, the forest, the, the various herbs and the various planets, much like us Hindus. Maybe the way the Nagas worship was a bit different because they had a separate language and dialect, hence their name of those various natural deities were different. We may be calling it Indra, you may be call, your ancestors may have called some other name, but the concept was the same. Take for example, in your neighboring Arunachal Pradesh, they worship the sun and the moon. In Hinduism also, we worship the sun as Surya and moon as Chandra. They call it Don Yi Polo and we call it Surya Chandra. That only difference is the difference in dialects, in tongues. Otherwise, the concept is one and the same. If you see Mahabharat, which is a Itihas Granth, in Mahabharat, one of the Kshatriya Surya Vanshi Pandavs, Arjun had married a Naga princess. Abhimanyu, I guess, had also married a Naga princess. So how can you say that there was no cultural link between Hindus and Nagas? How can you say that Nagas were not Hindus? Because Nagas were worshipping the same gods, pantheon, deities as Hindus were. So obviously, Nagas were Hindus. Even the term Naga is a Sanskrit term. Secondly, Nagas say that they originated from the Ichadhari Nag and Nagin race, which we in Puranic terms call as Nag. So the even the ancestry, even the origin of Hindus and Nagas is the same. Another thing, the term Naga was once upon a time prevalent all across India or rather wherever the Aryan Hindus were there or they went. For example, given in distant Rajasthan, there is this particular Kshatriya Rajput clan called Nagavanshi Kshatriya or Nagavanshi Rajput. And they and historians accept that there was a time when Nagavanshi Kshatriyas ruled entire length and breadth of Hindustan, especially Dravidinadu, that is South, South India, Dakshinapatya. So how can you say that Hindus are different from Nagas or Nagas are not Hindus? Another thing I would like to tell you is that when the British invaded Nagaland, I will call it Naga Pradesh, not Nagaland, because Nagaland is a Christianized Anglical English name given by the British dogs. When the Britishers invaded Naga Pradesh, didn't your Naga ancestors fight them? Didn't your Naga forefathers fight the Christian missionaries? 
then how can you spit and urinate on the memories and bravery of your own Naga ancestors by embracing Christianity and the Vatican agenda? Also, you say that the Naga club in 1929 had declared itself free from British rule and it was from 1929 that the Christian Nagas started crusading for a separate Nagalim. Let me tell you, the facts are different. In 1929, the Congress under Nehru had declared Purun Swaraj, full independence from the British rule. This made the mem Christian members of Naga Club afraid. Now, what was the Naga Club? The Naga Club was basically a conglomerate of Christian or rather converted rise back Christianized Nagas and British officials who formed the Naga Club in 1918. Remember that after 1857, the Britishers had formed under the leadership of Hume A.O. Hume, the Congress, to saturate the Indian patriotic fervor. Similarly, they did the same experiment even in Naga Pradesh. In 1918, the British officers and Christianized Naga rice bags, they formulated the Naga Club. When in 1929, the Congress declared that they want Purna Swaraj and not just semi-autonomy, these Christian Nagas and the British masters wanted to make a dent in Hindu unity, wanted to make a dent in Indian national freedom struggle. They wanted to ensure that even if Britishers were forced to leave India, they would still balkanize India to some extent by cutting off Northeast and Nagale, Naga Pradesh. That's the reason why the Christian Naga Gauburas, Dobashis, teachers, government servers, servants, pastors and educated Christians, they formulated the Naga club and Naga labor corps personnel. It had two branches, one at Kohima and the other at Mokokchung. But this Naga club never ever worked for Indian national movement. It was just a game plan of Britishers to bifurcate the Indian community, to separate the Nagas from the Indian Hindu mainstream. But there is also another reason why the Naga club was born. And it, uh, in 1929, why, uh, what forced the Naga club to submit a memorandum to the Simon Commission for a separate Nagalim if the Britishers departed from India? The reason was, one, because Congress declared Purna Swaraj in 1929 and also because in 1929, the Hiraka movement was started by Haipo Jadonang and Rani Gandhin Liu, who wanted to establish the Naga kingdom and who wanted to build, bring about a renaissance of Naga customs, traditions and tribal culture, which were Hindu in spirit and different from British sponsored Christianity. So Purna Swaraj demand in 1929 and the rise of the Hiraka movement in 1929 forced the Christians to ask the Britishers to uh, for a separate Christian land and the Britishers wanted to divide India into as many pieces as possible if it had to give independence to India. Hence they sponsored and patronized the Naga club movement in 1929 and its demand for a separate Christian Naga state. This is the history of Christian Naga separatism. So you see that the Naga jihadis are nobody but those sponsored and fanned by the, by the British masters. Similarly, even today, some Nagas say that they are closer to China than to Hindustan. Let me tell you one thing, that the very name China 
has come from a Naga tribe called China. Even today, amongst the Nagas, there is a tribe called China. This Naga tribe traveled from Naga Pradesh to Bhutan, Nepal, Tibet and landed up in China where they joined as soldiers, mercenaries and warriors in the Chinese emperor's army. Slowly, they went up the ladders of success and they gained power. They had, a, they had authority once at Beijing or Peking and they became the rulers of China. Before that, the nation of China was called something else. It was only when these guys went and they took control of China that the name China was given to the landmass that we know today. And then the Sanskrit book started calling them Mahachin, Parachin and all. But the name China has come because of a Naga tribe called China. That's the reason why the Chinese know their history because they themselves call themselves not China people. They call themselves Han people. That's the reason why out of a sense of what shall I say, uh, inferiority, they want to suppress the fact that China, the name of China originated in amongst the Naga people. That's the reason why they want to suppress the contribution of the Naga people towards even China's name. Hence, they want to take control of Naga Pradesh. Plus, they have enmity with Hindustan. Hence, they, as a state policy, want to support Naga Jihad in Northeast India. Just as how a few Naga rise back dogs and bitches were dancing at the beck and call of the British Empire and the European colonialists, we now have various Nagas, Christian Nagas, who are dancing at the beck and call of China, Chinese government, Vatican, and even Pakistan and Hujistan. That is Bangladesh. It's an irony that a Naga doesn't want to mix with Hindus, but they want to mix with Bangladeshis. In Nagaland itself, in Naga Pradesh itself, we have several Naga girls have married Bangladeshis. And one Bangladeshi man may have married two, three, four Naga girls. And he's pushing them into the farms, making them work or even work in the brothels. And he's earning from their sweat and cunt. Still, Nagas will consider them as their enemies, as their best friends and us Hindus as enemies. Another thing which contributed to the separation of Naga Pradesh from rest of India is because of certain missionary friends of Nehru who coaxed him into forming a law that no Hindu sadhu should ever enter Naga Pradesh or the regions near Naga Pradesh or where Nagas lived. This also resulted in divorce between the Nagas and the Hindus. And we know that slowly and gradually Nagas today are totally Christianized. And it's a strange thing that Nagas are following the religion of uh, Christians when uh, they had themselves a rich religion of their forefathers, they spat on their forefathers' memories and uh, accepted the religion of their Christian invaders. So I would like to request all Nagas through this video, come back to the Indian mainstream, come back to the Hindu mainstream and kick aside Jesus Christ. Nagaland will never be Nagaland or Nagaland. Nagaland was, is and always will be Naga Pradesh, part of Hindustan, part of Hindu culture and Naga Pradesh will never be for Jesus Christ. Vande Matram, Om Hanumantai Namaha.